Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer. We're going to do a quick little video here on the last type of intermolar forces, which is called London dispersion forces. And the main issue here came arose when we said, okay, iodine is a solid at room temperature. Okay, so iodine just looks like this. And you'll note that iodine has a dipole moment of what? Dipole moment equaling zero. They have the exact same electric activity, so it cancels out to zero. And therefore, this thing is nonpolar. Nonpolar. But for some reason, one iodine molecule sticks nicely to another iodine molecule. And scientists were a bit um, perplexed by this. What is this attraction between these? Now, there is only one real force of attraction in, in nature, and that's the force of Coulomb attraction. Charges of negatives, charges of positives, divided by the distance squared. But in a sense, this thing still is nonpolar, so where are these positive and negatives coming from? Well, that's where we get London dispersion forces. This is sort of like the theory that they're sort of resting in this on and that they think how it works. London dispersion. forces. Okay, so how does that work? Right. Well, uh, first of all, we'll look at this little slide here. It shows, for example, all right, a couple different things. One, alkanes. This is just carbon chains. Simply just carbon chains. We call them alkanes. All right, one carbon, two carbons. The, the chains get longer and longer and longer. You'll find that the melting point gets higher, higher, and higher. You know we don't have any high electric atoms. We're not polar. All these things are nonpolar. So that's unusual that even though this is the way it is, look at this guy over here. Again, dipole moments of zero. It goes gas, gas, liquid, 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 solid. So we have a trend happening here where, again, just like before, something's happened that causes these long chains to stick together. Something is causing these bigger molecules stick together and that's London dispersion forces so how does this work well this is the theory behind it is that we have an atom and sometimes I call this a tippy canoe sort of idea and in this situation um, we have because electrons are moving we have more electrons on one side than on the other all right and we call therefore this causes a temporary dipole and one side's partially negative, one side's partially positive. And because it's it's only temporary, then it still is nonpolar. Okay, it's not going to help it dissolve in water, um, but it will let one of these guys stick to the other side. The factors that affect this are number of electrons and long chains. The more you have of this stuff the more polarizable you are. That's basically it. So um, you could have some other little wrinkles here. You can induce this to happen. But either way, the more polarizable you are is, is the more likely this thing can get lopsided. All right. So these are two factors you want to be aware of when dealing with London dispersion forces. All right. Um, again, temporary dipole, um, long chains, this is an example of how it works here. We usually abbreviate this uh, thing LDF, London Dispersion Forces. All right. Um, all right, so complete final flow chart of bonding. So how do we want to look at this thing? The first thing we want to do, and this is really important for general understanding, is, okay, what type of substance do you have, okay? Do you have an ionic substance? Do you have a covalent substance? Are you dealing with a... All right. Do you have um, a situation, what's, what's breaking when it melts? So when this guy goes this way, you're going to break an ionic bond. That's really hard. This is going to be very high melting points. All right. But the factors affecting that would be size of charges and the uh, radius or internuclear distance. 
All right. Battery says internuclear distance. Internuclear distance. Okay. Get a little bit sloppy there. Okay. Um, covalent compounds. Okay. So the next thing you look at here, how do you want to decide this? What's breaking? Well, first of all, it's an intermolecular force is going to break. All right. It, how you look at this really can vary. Sometimes I look at it like this, you know, do I have a steeler? Okay. N O F. Okay. If the answer is uh, no, all right, then there's a good chance I'm going to be nonpolar. Only force that works on nonpolars would be London dispersion forces. All right, if the answer is yes, okay, there's one more step yet. Are we symmetrical? If the answer is yes, then our charges cancel and all you have is lung dispersion forces and you're once again nonpolar. If the answer is no, then you are polar. Okay. And you're going to be breaking either a hydrogen bond or you're going to be breaking a covalent bond. I'm oh, sorry, a um, dipole dipole. All right. That's our general flow chart. Really important. All right. Let's flip to a couple of questions here. So glance at this thing here, we have ethane butane. The first thing I'm looking for is nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. That's one of the first things I think about. None of those are there, so the only thing we have available to us is London dispersion forces. The factors affecting London dispersion forces are length, number of electrons and length of chains. Okay, so that's just what we got here. This more mass here is kind of giving you a hint into the number of electrons. The Mulcair formula and more mass of two straight chain hydrocarbons are listed in the table above. Based on the information in the table, which of the following has higher pulling point and why? Well, I'd be looking for the longer chain to have the higher pulling point. So, C for H10, so I want to cross out that one and that one because they're too short, too small. Um, so another question is why? This is saying it's because it has hydrogen bonding. That is a big no-no, right? It doesn't have a highly electric atom. So the answer is letter B because it's more polarizable. Anytime you want to use the word polarizable, you're always dealing with London dispersion forces, right? That's including those kind of factors here, okay? Next. All right, there's my answer. Next one. All right, which of the following is the strongest type of interaction that occurs between the atoms within the circled area? All right, you should be aware that's really classic hydrogen bonding. All right, letter C. And move along. Again, just our last slide to review types of intermolecular forces are dipole. dipole, um, hydrogen bonding, um, London dispersion forces. You could have another one called an ion dipole, which we will talk about a little bit here and there. All right, just a reminder, that's a really strong covalent bond here. It does not break easily. We're breaking the weak interactions between them, okay? Lots of practice on this particular concept, not going to happen overnight. Thank you.